Devon, how do you treat dyslexia? First of all, we would want to have an assessment done to determine the level of dyslexia and the um, significance of the underlying processing difficulties that we know are often um, the main issues with dyslexia. So first of all, we, for a sighted person, we need to make sure that their, their vision system is working correctly, both their visual acuity and their, their focusing ability and eye muscle control. We need to make sure that they can hear correctly so that they can then better able to perceive the sounds in words. We know one of the underlying problems in dyslexia is this difficulty with analysing sounds in words, what we call phonological processing. So we would need to see what level of difficulty um, the student has in that area. And then basically we do know, and all the research tells us, that the most effective way to treat dyslexia is to explicitly teach um, the correspondence between letters and sounds, the sequential processing of sounds and words, and whole word recognition, then developing eventually uh, onto reading fluency. Do we talk about cures? We, when we think about a cure, we usually think of that in terms of a disease. So, you know, you have a disease, uh, for example, you might have, um, uh, you know, cancer, and that can be cured with treatment. But dyslexia is not a disease. So we would never talk about a cure for, for, for dyslexia because it isn't a disease. It's a condition that is very treatable. But I think if anybody offers a cure for dyslexia, I'd be very cautious of that because we know it's treatable, but my belief is it doesn't ever really go away completely. So you can certainly treat it and really improve the, the, the skills of a person with dyslexia, but I would never use the word cure for dyslexia. I think it's interesting that you mentioned that it would never go away completely. Does that mean that a person can still uh, succeed in life, if I could use that term? Yes, uh, and many, many, many successful people in the world today um, are known to have had dyslexia. Tom Cruise is an example, um, Kerry Packer, the, the, one of the wealthiest Australians we've ever had was uh, reported to be dyslexic. And so dyslexia is no bar to being successful at all. Well, you've just mentioned two professions there that are uh, pretty uh, far apart from one another. Um, are there any particular professions that uh, people who suffer from dyslexia uh, can be particularly good at? Well, uh, once upon a time, I would have said yes, because if your profession requires a great deal of, of high level reading ability and writing ability, you know, you would find that more difficult, for example, something like journalism or law. But that being said now, with technology, they would not even be professions that would necessarily you, you couldn't uh, achieve in with dyslexia because now we have the technology that, as I mentioned earlier, the, the, the speech-to-text and text-to-speech technology mm. um, helps the person with dyslexia get around those those issues. So really, I don't think there's any um, anything you couldn't do uh, if you're a person with dyslexia. You also, also mentioned uh, before that it's not related to low IQ. So I guess coupled with what you've just said, that really does throw the door quite wide open for people to, to choose whatever career they wanted. Yes, and I think um, by doing an assessment um, at some stage in life, but also not necessarily an assessment, but just understanding a person's strengths, people are also going to be much more successful and get a lot more enjoyment out of a career where they're doing something they love or where they're doing something that they have a real talent for. I mean, a job is not hard if you're doing what you love. Uh, and so understanding the strengths of a person with dyslexia um, and uh, developing those strengths really helps them achieve in life. And there are many successful people with dyslexia, you know, who have fantastic visual spatial skills, for example, architects, designers, uh, artists, and so uh, musicians who, um, you know, thrive uh, despite their dyslexia. 
So I guess coming back now to someone, a younger person who might still be at school and might be struggling perhaps with the system or the way that they're being assessed, the news is very positive then for them for the future in that they, their condition may not necessarily need to be an impediment for their professional future. Exactly. And I think the key for those students is to have uh, early diagnosis and very uh, explicit teaching and intensive teaching. We know that for someone with dyslexia, they're going to have to do more practice with reading and spelling than children without dyslexia. I use the analogy that sometimes they have to put in a thousand times more effort for 10% of the outcome. But that is a reality for these children that they do have to work harder to develop the skills that a child without dyslexia doesn't have to do. But often that comes with great strength. I'm, I'm always amazed at the students I work with and their ability to, to keep going, to keep trying. And you know, they know they've got to work harder, but they do it and they just amaze me every day. That's great news, Devon. Thanks so much. Pleasure.